You know, we, we always talk about the, the Kobe and, uh, you know, kind of how he... LeBron, MJ. Right. Yeah. Co- Co- Kobe kind of, you know, took what MJ was doing. I think you're the only defense or defensive corner ever that we always say that kind of try to emulate Deion Sanders. Is that a true statement? The way you dress, the numbers, the two that you wore in practice. Is that I just wanna I just wanna put that out there for that's one of the only <laughs> questions I get to ask me today. That, I mean kinda, I wore two in high school. So the two as a practice jersey was just something I kind of always did. Um, okay. but if, you know, yeah, I mean, you know, you think of some of the most famous twos that played the position I played and obviously Dion name pops up, Charles Wilson name pops up. I wore four in yeah. college. Champ Bailey name pops up. Um, but yeah, man, you know, those were guys that that kind of was the standard pairs. You know, you throw Daryl Green in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, a couple other guys I know I'm missing. Uh, but just, you know, you want to try to take a little bit of everybody's game just to try to put in your own. And, you know, I absolutely try to try mm-hmm. to take as much of Prime and a little bit of Champ and see right. what Green and, you know, Aeneas and all these, you know, great, great players just tried to take take what I could get from them and try to put it in my game. So, right. yeah, I think yeah. I took that Deion Sanders prime time in Atlanta mm-hmm. and, uh, and ran with it, especially getting that 2-1 down there. Right. And, and for the fans out there that don't know, the reason we're talking about him wearing number two in practice because corners can't wear a single digit in the game. So what uh, players do, they kind of like to wear during their practice jersey, they'll put on their single digits in practice and they'll rock them like that because they yeah. can't wear them in the game. So for all the fan base out there wondering about the number two and what that means for guys to wear them in practice, that's why you know it's kind of a big it's kind of a big deal. It is. <laughs> it is. Look, I look. I got eight year old twins, and they like, man. I don't, when I get to the NFL, I can't. I can't wear a single digit number. I'm like, no, unless you no. <laughs> back or you're a punter. Right. Hey, but, <laughs> but, but, but be fresh though. Right, but the way things are going, you never know. By the time they get to the league, True. Yeah. that may be permissible. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, when we shoot, when we came in, yeah, receivers couldn't wear 10 through 19 yeah. uh, in the late 90s, probably early 2000. I think they probably changed that. Shoot, maybe Larry Fitzgerald's rookie year, maybe that 2003, 2004, because Fitzgerald had 11. And no other, you know, especially prominent wide receivers at the time had, um, you know, a 10 through 19. And now that's all you see. Nobody even wants a, a – definitely nobody wanted 81. Well, that's for well, sure. Nobody correction. wants that. Correction. Keyshawn had 19. <laughs> yeah, but Keyshawn was getting fined, I remember. Yeah. He, could, he couldn't oh, wear it. He couldn't wear it. What I heard was Keyshawn would write a check at the beginning of the season and say, I'm wearing 19 every game is right. at least that's the myth. That I always heard. Oh right. wow! I it was it no was idea. illegal. It was because I because again you had to have on the roster you had to have eighty through eighty nine full you know the tight ends. It in had to order be to get order right. for, yeah in order for that to happen. Gotcha. Oh man, yeah. this is news to me, man. I'm getting educated <laughs> on my own show. You know, Bro, we're gonna I educate had, you, dog. You know what I'm no, saying? I we had, got you. I, I had no idea that that, I didn't know that was a thing. I knew that, that obviously there's numbers designated for a position, but I didn't know that you really couldn't wear a particular mm. number outside of your position. Yeah. Wow, yeah, that's crazy. Well, yeah, so d I know, let's say you uh, live in uh, Virginia area now. You're from the Chesapeake, Virginia area. You were talking about your high school career a little bit. Take us back to high school. Like, you know, start us out when, because you were on the offensive side of the ball as well, right? Good. You were great with the ball in your hands. Uh, of course, and kind of that kind of translated over to college, of course. But take us back to, to what Deep Creek High School, you yeah. know, the, the superstar you were at the high school level. <laughs> well, you know, I went to Deep Creek High School down in that Chesapeake, Virginia area, 757 area. A lot of a lot of great football players, basketball players, Allen Iverson, Michael Vick, mm-hmm. um, Joe Smith, oh, wow. overall pick out of Maryland. Um, didn't turn into a superstar player, but we just – you know, coming from that area, it was always guys who had made it big. Bruce Smith you know, was another name. Uh, mm. Kenny Easley. You know, and just seeing those guys from a distance, man, as a young kid growing up, it just always gave you the motivation that, man, I can make it. You know, mm. if, hey, I made it from 30 minutes up the street. If Mike Vick made it from 45 minutes up the street. You know, why can't I make it? And so mm-hmm. it really gave us, uh, you know, it gave us the ability to to kind of see that dream or have that dream. But mm-hmm. then those guys made it, you know, we felt like we could make it. And so 
you know, my high school career was good. I wouldn't say I was a great uh, football player. I was always kind of fast, always kind of had a chip on my shoulder. I think T probably knows that more than any anybody, man. I always had a chip mm-hmm. on my shoulder. Right. It, was never, it was never a guy too big for me. Um, you know, y'all know the scuffles I've gotten in on sidelines with O-line mm-hmm. and, and all these other <laughs> uh, situations, fussing out coaches. I've always kind of played with that chip on my shoulder because, you know, being 5'10", 190 pounds soaking wet, like, if I don't think... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't play with nobody. <laughs> he ain't going to think I'm shutting him down, right? And so right. You know, I tell people all the time, man, my persona on the field and off the field is totally different because on the field, man, like I'm crazy and I know I'm crazy. Mm-hmm. You, know, you got to be a little bit you crazy. You got to be crazy. Go out there and check <laughs> T.O. by yourself, to check Marvin Harrison by yourself, to check Randy Moss by yourself. You know, all mm-hmm. these great Hall of Fame players, you know, and I thought I was a good, really good corner. You know, I, I thought I was a great football player. Um, mm-hmm. And I think it just goes back to, like you said, in high school, playing running back, playing receiver a little bit in college, um, you know, being really good with the ball in my hands as a returner. It just kind of, you know, it was always about trying to go out there and make a play. And even on the defensive side of the football, I always hated hearing uh, commentators and coaches say, oh, he plays defense because he can't catch. No, <laughs> Right. <laughs> I like hitting people, not getting hit. There um, it is, right. okay. When I see DBs not catching balls, I'm like, bro, that's why you play corner. So, there you go. Right, there you go. right, right. Uh, exactly. Already. So, again, so now, of course, you get to that uh, getting recruited area going into a college. Now, how much did that decision on, you know, if they're going to let you return kicks or get the ball in your hand a little bit, how much did that play into your decision on going to college? Well, really, the only thing that played into my decision was, uh, you know, was if I was going to be able to play right away. Um, you know, I was a young kid. I graduated high school at 17. Wow. Um, yep. Good difference. In November. And so, you know, I, I graduated in June and had to go to college in, in July for a summer school program. Mm-hmm. Um, and Virginia Tech was one of the few schools who was kind of like, all right, you know, we're willing to see what you got. Uh, you know, I had a, a, a lot of other offers, a lot just stem from track. You know, I ran a lot of track in high school as well. Mm-hmm. It's like a lot of offers just because, you know, everyone knew I was fat. Um, but Virginia Tech was really probably the only school that was talking to me because they knew that I could play football. You know, I had my mm-hmm. aunt in Florida State wanted me to come on track scholarships and things like that. But I wanted to be viewed as a football player um, that ran track, not a track guy that played football. Right. right. Ended up picking Virginia Tech. And it didn't hurt either. I, like, you know, you, you talked about me being a primetime fan. I mm-hmm. wanted to go to State bad. Um, right. The conversations with that staff at the time was I was going to red shirt off off rip. They didn't want me. They didn't want to see nothing from me. I was going to red shirt. And I'm like, coach, like, can you can you at least tell me I'm going to compete for a job or a compete <laughs> to see if I'm a red shirt or something? And so, you know, that recruiting process was pretty easy for me because, you know, having Virginia Tech play for the state and national championship the year prior, you know, it was kind of a no brainer. I got to stay in state and then they start kind of pitching the, you know, if, you know, if we stay in, in the state of Virginia, if the Virginia kids stay in state, we got a chance to beat teams like Miami. And, mm-hmm. yeah. which, mm-hmm. you know, we did have, a, you know, we did beat those guys a couple of times. And as you, as you guys know, they weren't, they weren't lacking talent, man. One year we right. beat a, nine first rounders, you know, I played the, the, the yeah. second year that hit Ed Reed, uh, Mike Rump, mm-hmm. Philip Buchanan, main yeah. little backups were Antrail Roll. Sean Ted, oh, wow. you know, uh, it, it was just a stacked team beyond mm-hmm. Shockey was out there one tight end and his backup was Kellen Winslow, who probably ran right. Yeah. <laughs> our team. You could imagine. <laughs> uh, already. Well, shoot, I guess you made the right choice. You're now in the Virginia Tech Sports Hall of Fame. So congratulations on that as well, man. Thank you. Thank you. Also, what, obviously, you, you said you were obviously known for, for being fast. Did you consider running on the track team? I, I ran a little track one one off season at uh, at Tech. It just was too much, you know. It was just a whole lot, you know. Being in college, I wanted to enjoy the experience, right. so mm-hmm. I was having to go to spring practice and go to track practice. You know, I saw the results that spring. I ran four one five, and I think that's when a lot of Oof. started to wow. really notice. Well, I mean, that was a handheld time, and you know, Virginia Tech has a myth of having the fastest times in the country. Um, <laughs> a couple of years earlier than that, Mike ran 4-2-something. And so 
We yeah. are fast. I don't quite know if we're that fast, but mm -hmm. right. <laughs> what uh, what events did you run? 100, 200? Yeah, I was a sprinter, so I ran the sprinter. 100, 200. Yeah, okay. I right, so. only got to run indoors, so I only ran the 60. 